Hello and welcome. This is On and Off the Pitch. We have a very special interview with a football player from Lewis Women's FC. It is Jessica King, known as she'd like to be called as Jess. Jess, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Right, before we jump into the kind of interview about your journey into football and your, and yeah. your life per se, I just want to touch base. How are you generally? Okay, I know everyone's at home, you know, some isolated on their own with, with family. How are you coping? Yeah, um, I'm just trying to keep myself busy as possible. I'm, I'm enjoying the rest a little bit um, and trying to stay fit and, you know, trying to stay connected with people via Zoom or on the phone and stuff. So overall doing doing okay, just wanting to get back to playing and being allowed to go for a coffee or something. So. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's a big yeah. ask, you know. We can come yeah. into that later on, a big ask, yeah. big ask. Okay, so, you know, you're now playing uh, football professionally, you know, as, as you yeah. love. Can you tell me, you know, where did this start for you in terms of your, your love for the game? When did it start? Uh, ever since I was, I can remember, to be honest. Um, my mum, my mum's a um, big Liverpool fan and my dad's a big Everton fan. Um, and my mum played football as well. Uh, in fact, both of them did. So, um, I just, from when I can remember, I just love playing football, and um, I support Liverpool, so I've always followed them. And yeah, I started on a team when I was six, so I was quite young and yeah, eager. Eager. So let me get this right. Your your mum used to play football as well. Yeah. Okay. So do you kind of is she your role model then? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I I didn't see her play. Um, so and obviously back then for women, you know, she was in the police. Um, so trying to balance or you know getting, um, I'm pretty sure she missed the FA Cup final because her job wouldn't let her off to go. So or it was some big FA Cup game. So I yeah, she she had to kind of deal with that. So but she still helps me and she's actually a coach. So. She definitely has had a massive impact on me as a player and obviously off the pitch as well. Okay. I mean, obviously, you know, when you're, you have a parent who plays the sport that you love uh, and yeah. she watches in, you say she's a coach, does she, does she tell you to work on specific parts of your game? Um, she wouldn't necessarily say something, but I would ask her, you know, can you watch this or what do you think? And then she'd give me honest feedback. Um, or, you know, if she sees me not performing at, you know, a level that she's seen before, she'd be like, oh, what, what's wrong? Like, you didn't see yourself in this game. So always honest, but always supportive. Well, that's what parents do generally. So, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, that's good. And is dad necessarily the same as well? Is he just as supportive for you and has always been? Yeah, I mean, I, I was mainly just with my mum, but... Um, yeah, especially since um, I came back from Canada in 2015, he's um, he was always at my home matches for Everton and he's come to visit me in Switzerland, Germany and Norway actually and he came down to Lewis last, at the end of last season so yeah, he, he enjoys it as well. That's really good. I'm glad to hear that both parents are keen to follow your progress. It's, it's, yeah. it's great, it's great, it's great. Yeah. Um, You've played in a number of different clubs, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, at Lewis, you, and playing abroad in in Europe, how how different is that from what you're experiencing right now at Lewis? Well, I'd definitely say just the language barrier. Um, you know, and I I loved it. I I did. You know, I've learned a lot of things about myself that you know I would never have known if I just stayed in England. Um, so. You know, different styles of play, um, different strengths and weaknesses, kind of generally. Um, but my first coach in Switzerland, she was German, and we got on really well. But she couldn't speak any English, and obviously, when I when I got there, I couldn't speak a word of German. So, um, I got lessons. The club um, provided lessons for me, um, so then we were able to communicate a little bit better. But well, obviously that was like a massive challenge and something that you never really think about. Um, and then on the pitch as well, you know, communicating. And but obviously I I I loved it. And 
you know, I'm, I'm, I wish I could have stayed at a few clubs a bit longer, but, you know, women's football isn't as secure as men. So you, a lot of the time, getting off with one-year contracts or the financial situations of a club might change drastically. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, you, you had to learn German. Do you still speak yeah. some, some language, some other language now? Yeah, I've, I've actually just been studying. I've been taking an online course because um, I, I really enjoyed learning and being able to speak, especially with the girls on the team that couldn't speak English. Um, just obviously, you know, I made a lot of mistakes, but just showing that effort, I think, was really helpful for me to fit in with the team um, so they could see that I'm making an effort. And um, yeah, so I, I'm still trying to keep it going, but it's harder when you're not living there because I'm not listening to it every day or, you know, the sessions were all in German and stuff. So but I'm trying to keep it going and um, hopefully it'll be useful in the future. So Yeah. What are you using for the language in terms of learning now? What's your tool? Um, well, I took an online course. Um, I can't remember where it was from, but it was a little bit easy. So then I, um, the Open Learning or Open University is putting yeah. on loads of free courses at the minute. So I'm taking one of the intermediate ones and it's um, about the workplace um, so just so I can get a bit of a different vocabulary sense um, other than football or just general speaking. Um, yeah. yeah, that's the world. All, all power to you, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> all power to you. So apart from, you know, the language barrier, which is, is yeah. obviously difficult for anyone that's probably leaving the UK. If you were, yeah. if, if, you know, considering where you are now in your career, yeah. If you could go back to the Jess King 10 years ago, what yeah. advice would you give her? Well, um, I would probably just say, just be fearless. You know, I think a lot of the time we're caught up with comparing ourselves, you know, as athletes to other people or, you know, holding back a little bit because you don't want to fail. But I think, I'd just say be fearless and believe in yourself because, you know, there's going to be times when you're peaking and you're feeling great and then there's going to be times where you may be feeling a little bit alone or you go through a challenging time and it doesn't matter what anyone, anyone else thinks, you know, you need to believe in yourself because you're the only person that can make the decisions to either keep yourself on a positive note or kind of pick yourself back up and move forward. That's so something that, like that. <laughs> that's really good advice. That's really some people get to their like late forties and fifties and they still don't know what to say. So it's it's it, you're be, being very reflective in terms of your journey yeah. so far. Um, yeah. I almost I asked that question because I thought I wonder if she's going to say learn a language. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never even thought about that. To be honest, I didn't even think about the language situation until I landed in Switzerland and the plane, you know, over the Tannoy thing. They started speaking German. And I was like, oh, and then I was panicking because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Can people speak English? Like, I didn't even consider it until I got there. So, <laughs> yeah. You de so you definitely did jump in at the deep end and you just went, yeah, yeah I'm going. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I had like two days between getting off of the contract and then leaving Canada because that's where I, I was living. That's where my mum lives now. So I got offered it. And then two days later, I left. And I was in Switzerland, so. Wow. So that that that's, that must say something to you and yourself that you're brave enough. You say you you would go back and tell your younger self, "Be fearless." You yeah. must already have that in you to to make that check. Because a lot of people will kind of ponder as to whether or not to make the move, but it happened really quickly. So you you definitely have that about you. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I moved to Canada when I was eighteen. To, to go on a scholarship and um, go to university. So I think I was always just had that attitude of what if, you know, what if it turns out to be great or, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can always go home, but I'll never know if it was, if it was good or not, unless I try and, you know, I, you know, when you come from a place where there's not a lot of expectation on you and then you kind of get to a point in your life where all these opportunities are coming you know, then I feel like I should take them because, you know, not everyone gets this opportunity to travel the world or to see different cultures and stuff. And, you know, my mum pushed me enough to kind of be able to get 
into university and that kind of changed changed me in a positive way and then I was thinking what what next so yeah that's really good so you you, you know you studied in Canada which university what did you study um I it was Trinity Western University and I studied psychology um wow. yeah so I started off with political studies but I wasn't really that good at studying when I first went there and it was a lot of reading so I had to kind of ponder for a little bit and then I decided psychology because I was I was interested in that so mm. and do you hope to kind of go in that direction once you've finished in the top psychology or is it do you use it at all in your in your day-to-day -day life um well I'm supposed to be um starting my master's in criminology and criminal psychology in September um but depending on how long the lockdown goes on or if we play football, I might see if I can start in June instead. Right, where, um, where will that be if you don't mind me jumping in? Um, at the University of Essex, it's online, uh, obviously, because, you know, I've moved around quite a bit, so I didn't want to commit somewhere. And then, you know, I might get offered some, a contract somewhere else. And then, you know, I didn't want to waste that opportunity. So I just um, thought online. I looked for online um, places, really. Well, that's good. I mean, you sound like you have a plan. Which is, oh, which, is <laughs> which, which is excellent, which is excellent, excellent. Uh, I saw a, a little video that you put on social media about you went for a run and you kind of stated afterwards the importance of going out for a daily either walk or run to keep your mental health, you know, in check and, and take care of yourself. I mean, obviously, it's a very difficult time for everyone in terms of, of sport. Um, mm -hmm. how, how are you coping generally, you know, with, with this? Um, period of lockdown and, and motivating yeah. yourself really well I think you know there's nothing worse than going back after a break to football and, and you think oh I haven't put the work in so I think that's motivating me obviously it's harder on some days because you're like when are we going to play you know but I, I, I feel like I'm fitter now than I was when we stopped um in March so I'm just trying to get myself to as, as fit as I can be and you know that's kind of my, my motivation because I don't want to get worse I want to get better and it's an opportunity maybe where I've got more time to focus on my fitness um and yeah I mean I've got a lot of more energy right now because I'm not playing football every day so I'm a bit <laughs> um hyperactive sometimes but yeah i'm just trying to keep busy and then learn my german and read a little bit or paint or write or you know just stuff that i didn't quite have a, a lot of time to do before so that's good questions on the, um, the other things you're, you're reading and you're writing are you writing anything in particular and what are you reading um where's my book I don't know. I'm currently reading Brene Brown, Rising Strong. I think oh. Rising Strong, yeah. Okay. My mum got that for me for Christmas. Um, and then I write poetry and stuff like that. Um, so I've got a bit more time to kind of, you know, look back at, at old stuff that I've done and then also write some new stuff. Right. And do you publish any of that or is it just private? Um... Well, I I just started um, putting it online. I've only posted a couple of things um, on Instagram, but yeah, it's something I've been putting off for a while. Um, so I'm I'm actually I rap a little bit. So I'm I'm bringing a song out um, called "Raises Up" about women's football, actually. Um, but it was supposed to come out around March or April, but we've had to put it on hold just because a few a few things and obviously the lockdown. Mm. Um, so yeah, now I'm just trying to use this time as well to put myself out there a little bit more than I normally have um, with that. That's so. And and your Instagram, I have to ask your Instagram account, what's, what, what's the, is it just Jess King or Jessica King or? My um, personal one or the Well, the one for the for your writing. Um, your it's spoken underscore, spoken underscore word. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll look out for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so you've had um, ex spells in, in Germany, Switzerland, you know, out of those two places, we'll get on to Lewis in a moment, but which one did you like the most and what were your biggest challenges whilst there? Um, just between those two or the others as well? Well, you could incorporate the others, but I thought in terms of, of, of Germany and Switzerland because okay. kind of... Um, I'd probably say I liked Switzerland better because I, I lived in Basel. So it was a bit more lively and you know i lived around the corner from the men's stadium which was awesome i could walk to the facilities um you know it's such a big club they're in the champions league and um you know i, I think we were worked really hard by the coach there and obviously there was challenges because you know i missed missed home a little bit and the language, you know, sometimes you just chill, chill on your team and you just zone out because they're talking and it's so hard to try and um, mentally just to stay switched on to another language. Um, so I'd, I'd say that was probably my biggest challenge there. And then Germany, obviously, Bundesliga, you're playing against some of the biggest teams, um, which obviously is like a massive highlight. Um, but yeah, I didn't really enjoy living there at all. No. So yeah, it was <laughs> it was East East German Germany. It was a small, small town and you know, still how do I say this in a diplomatic way? A little bit old fashioned in their menta mentality. Yeah, well, I can understand what you're saying, I'm sure everyone else will understand as well. You don't have to yeah. explain yeah. too much detail. Yeah, so that that was really d difficult. Obviously, like off off the pitch, I didn't really want to go outside. Like, I didn't want to interact with people really because it was, you know, people would say things in the street or, you know, a little bit on not all the time on your team, but you know, just little comments. And you're on your own in a foreign country, and you don't know. You try and raise the the concern, but then it's kind of pushed back or take it as a joke kind of thing, and you know, it's it's hard to know what to do and then do you just take it and then you get angry about, I don't know. So it was, it was very challenging for me to kind of keep calm in, in, in that. But yeah, it's just some, it's just part of, part of my um, journey, I guess. And so. Yeah, and you come through yeah. it and you're stronger for it. Yeah, exactly. So now you're at Lewis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's it going there? Good. Yeah, we've got, you know, a lot of new players. I come at the back end of last season um, and I really enjoyed the girls. And then we've got a lot of new players now and, you know, I, I really like them. So um, I think, you know, with what what we've got in terms of play, playing ability, I, I think we could be higher in the table. Um, but it hasn't worked out that way. So I really hope that we can finish finish the, the rest of the season so we can, you know, get a few more wins under our belt. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I did look at the table and the, the, the goal, I mean, where the, the team are in the in the league, you, you kind of, you're concerned, but I, I looked at the goal difference and that was an indication yeah. for me in terms of where the team stood. And there were a number of teams of Barbados that had goal difference that were far worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, far, know, far yeah. worse. And you just thought mm, the odd game here and there, the, the league position would look very, very different. But I've, I've seen the team play. I watched, watched them play yeah. against Arsenal in the FA Cup. Oh, okay. and I, was, yeah. I was thoroughly impressed with yeah. what I saw. So, yeah. Um, in terms of the, 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 the games coming back, you're desperate. I mean, do you want the, the season to end? Would you be devastated if it, it was caught cancelled? Or, or, or are you looking for it to be played? behind closed doors or, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Honestly, if I'm honest, I want it to finish just so that Liverpool win the league. Because <laughs> 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 I feel 
been waiting my whole life for this. But I mean, obviously, on it seriously, like you know, I want to play, but only if it's safe. Okay. You know, because it's not it's not worth it if then one person catches it and then you know it spreads around again or you know people get severely sick. So I'm glad I don't have to make the decision about it. But I, it, yeah, I would I would like to play, but obviously I understand if if the opposite decision is made. Yeah, I mean it is a very difficult decision, and obviously you you can only speak from your point of view as a player. Yeah. Uh, and as a fan, you want Liverpool to win, so there's 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 that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell you who I support. I'll leave that until the very end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you played now with Lewis for a, a, a number of months. Um, what are your hopes with with the team going forward? Whenever the games return, what are your hopes? Well, I've, I think just getting everyone back confident again, because I think. You know, it's nice to see the girls having fun again in training and um, and just having that confidence when we play. Because you know, I I was watching back, I think the Blackburn game and um, just seeing everyone's confidence and the Coventry game when we came back to win, just everyone's demeanour and attitude. I think it will be really nice to see as a group us all have that again um, when we come out and play. Because I think that definitely has an impact on our results, whether we, you know, concede the sloppy goal or whether we sneak one in at the in the last minute. Mm, that's, I mean, obviously that's that would be the case for most teams, but I understand what you mean. I want to ask you about your your position. Are you a striker or a midfielder? Striker, but I think it depends on. I mean, I really enjoy playing number ten as well. In an attacking team, <laughs> if we're playing really defensive, then I don't like playing number ten because I, I all I do is defend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of just play where I'm put. To be honest, I just want to play. I don't mind playing on the left, um, but I think I prefer playing number nine. But I do like getting on the ball a lot um, as a number ten. But like I said, only for playing <laughs> attacking <in> football. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I, I believe every footballer would say the same. I only like playing yeah. when we're attacking, but you know, unfortunately, it it doesn't always work like that. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. got to do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, in terms, of, I tried to find information in terms of your st- your stats. I was trying to work out, you know, whether you're a left footed player, you're right footed player. Do you, are you able to score with both? Do you? you yeah, well, I'm. Pr- Predominantly right footed, but I can use both. You can use both. Oh, because you've honed those skills well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I got told you need to use both feet, so I made sure to practice with both feet. Which is something, even in the men's game, when you're watching football, you'll see players and you think they cannot use their left foot. Yeah. So it's, it's good to hear that you've worked on both, and it's good to know that you feel comfortable to use both so you know yeah. all power to you and your team um you know when you're watching games like generally watching football games this is something that i but do you have what i call football feet if you're sitting on the sofa and you're watching a game do your feet start to move around as if you're actually in the game itself <laughs> um i wouldn't say they move around but sometimes i get a little like reflex in my leg or something where it's just you know, especially if it's a striker, you know, a close game or something, or like a Champions League game, you need to win. Um, yeah. but yeah, my feet don't move, but I definitely randomly have those little reflexes. <laughs> I asked that question, I thought to myself, is it just me, or does <laughs> everyone have this kind yeah. of you know, the ball's there and you go to kick it, but you just you're not in the game? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, out of all of the results that you've in terms of the games that you've played, whether it's been in Europe or, or at Lewis and elsewhere, has there been a result that has stayed with you in a bad way and a good way? Yes. Twice in Germany, I got called offside and I wasn't. And I think 
if we, we would have won the game that we drew and we would have drawn the game that we lost against Frankfurt, I scored a chip, then I don't think we would have got relegated. Mm. So those two things, and obviously it's football and it was early on and we had other chances and you can't, you know, dwell on those things. But I always think back to think like, because, you know, on the video you can see it and then the fans were kicking off after the fact because it was a, like a clear mistake. But, you know, those are the things that matter, you know, sometimes, but those things will always stay. And then all in, when I was in Canada, we won nationals twice. So 2012, 2013. And I can't remember which which year it was, but it was the game to take us to nationals. And we were losing. Or we were drawing. I can't remember. We, we needed a goal. So the coach put our centre-back up as another striker. And in literally the last little bit she scored and the celebrations were just crazy and we've got this crazy picture of me and her jumping into into each other hugging each other um i think that was actually the the goal that took us the extra time and then one of the other girls scored but i'll never forget that goal because yeah that took us to nationals and then we won so yeah it was pretty special do you have that you have it framed photo I, I did have it at home, but all my stuff is, is in Vancouver with my mum at the minute, so I haven't actually got it with me, but it's on Instagram or somewhere online. So. And and when you're finished playing, I mean, will you, you end up back in Canada or will you remain in the UK? And I, I don't know. Um, I, will, I would like to pursue coaching. That was my next um, question. So, yeah. Also, why I'm continuing with the language because you never know where you might, you know, get an opportunity. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I would like to stay in England, but yeah, I can't really answer that right now. Well, no, but I, I mean, it's really good that you're actually planning. It's what I call future proofing yourself yeah. because you're you're opening avenues to explore later on. You still, yeah. you know, you've still got many years left to play. Yeah. I just wanted to see what would you what was in your mind in terms of when you finished, are you just gonna go back to Canada? You know, but yeah. you're already talking about um you wanted to coach, you're learning a language, you don't know if it's, you've actually said you don't know where the opportunities will arise. So you're definitely yeah. open to moving back to Europe in terms of coaching. I, I yeah, think so. I mean that will be that will be temporary though. Like yeah. I wouldn't move somewhere else permanently. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. Yeah. I see I see for some reason I see you being a coach. <laughs> I see you being a I do, I see you being a coach further on down the line and being successful because you're because what you're doing is is good. You're learning a language and some and you know for so many of us that, that have languages at our, at our fingertips that we don't use them essentially mm. and um, you're spending the time wisely, which is, is is good to hear and see. And you're planning, even though you're not necessarily yeah. saying you're planning, but you are planning for yeah. what happens next. And that is is really, really good. Um, I want to find out in terms of your, in terms of the not so much planning while you're playing. Do you set yourself a target each season in terms of goals scored? or shots per game, or do, do any of those things come into your mind when you're thinking before a game, before a season? Uh, yeah, I mean, I always set myself goals on how many I want to score. Um, I usually set it a bit high just because I think, you know, if I come short of that, then I've still done good. If I aim for something small, then, you know, I'm only going to, have small ambition but I think I don't necessarily do shots per game but I try and think of it as in in a game if I've had two shots and scored one then that's a good ratio if I've had five shots and scored none then that's not you know what I mean so I kind of take it game by game and kind of look at it like that if I've had no shots 
then is it because I haven't got in, we haven't got enough into the box? Have I not created chances for myself when I've been in the box and those things? So I look at a little bit more detail to kind of analyse, you know, I can't be so hard on myself if I don't score and I haven't had one shot and we didn't even get into the box. Do you know what I mean? So I try and kind of take each game as it comes, so to speak. That's good. Uh, uh, before we come to the end, I want to ask you generally, because you, you know, as you stated already, you're a Liverpool fan. Uh, yeah. I don't want to dwell on this too long. Uh, <laughs> who are the players that you admire the most in in the men's game and in, in the women's game that you look at and think, wow, I, I wish I could do something, if they have a particular trick or a particular skill, do you look at them and think, I'm going to try that, I like them? Do you have any anyone in mind? Yeah, I mean, Thierry Henry was my favourite player. He's, he doesn't play for Liverpool. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, he was my favourite player. Steven Gerrard is by far my favourite. And then Suarez. Um, just because Suarez was just, he worked so hard and he was so passionate. Like, you could just see he was just 100% all the time. And I think as a forward, who was that good? he was still so hard working you know sometimes you see forwards just kind of not being lazy but kind of just dwelling on how good they are but I felt like he was always working working hard um Torres I mean there's loads of people that I could I could name but is, is you asking just about Liverpool players or no I mean generally in general you know the men's game the women's game it could be anyone that you do a particular player that you look at and you think yeah I do like what they do I want to be like them I want to try and that trick is it I mean not not so much now I'd say when I was younger like JJ Okocha um I loved SEN Drogba as much as I don't like Chelsea but I thought <laughs> I thought <laughs> I, I really enjoyed watching them play. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, Omri was my guy that I used to try and emulate. So, um, and then in the women's game, I'd, I'd say when I was younger, Mia Hamm was was my um, person I looked up to. Actually, I mentioned a few women in my song that that I I loved as a kid. So, um, but Carly Lloyd, I think her work rate and kind of her dominance is definitely something special. Um Midamar, she's she's a she's a, a great forward and she's proven to score a lot of goals in the league. Um yeah the, I could literally name loads of people. I think, you know, especially in the women's game, there's a lot of good players now. You know, there's a lot of skillful the level's gone up a lot so um yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know who else. I could sit here and list loads of people. <laughs> you've, you've listed quite a few, which is good. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely... But I'm surprised you mentioned JJ Okocha because some people, they you mentioned the name, it was like, who's that? You know, but he definitely was a very, very talented player. So I like, yeah. your, I like, your, taste. I like your taste. He used to do rainbows over people and he just... He just yeah, he, I just like watching him. So. Okay. Right, we're nearly coming to the end, so I'm going to um, ask you, uh, in terms of what you're going to do next for the rest of this week, the rest of the day, you know, have you got anything set in terms of your plans, or are you just going to chill? Or is it, are you going to do your fitness regime, going out for a run? Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm going to go um, for a run and do a workout, and then normally on Fridays I have a Zoom call with my friends in Vancouver. Um, a little bit later on, so I'll do that, and then probably just relax. Oh, and I, I'll go shopping as well tonight because I've tried to avoid going shopping during the day. So else. there's less there's less queues outside the shop when you go at like eight or nine at night. So mm, it makes it, yeah. it, it makes total sense. I'm going to say thank you, Jess, uh, for giving me the time and sharing your journey into football. Really interesting. And I, I do uh, wish you all the best in terms of your, your studies and learning the language. 
and I'll, I'll definitely be paying attention as to your progress with Lewis when the season returns and so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was nice chatting. No, oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, the, that was Jess King, uh, Lewis Women FC. This is On and Off the Pitch. I'm Robin Cyrus. I'll thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Don't worry, I'll edit that at the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jessica, um, sorry, I have three friends called Jessica, so I always kind of apologise when I say Jess because I'm thinking, oh, you don't know them that well. Um, I really, really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I don't. Were you, were you at the Arsenal game when Lewis played yeah. in the FA Cup? You were. Yeah, I you were on the bench. Yeah, yeah, you came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was sitting there and I was looking, and when you said, I was thinking. I don't remember a starting. I don't remember a starting. And I was really impressed with the, the, the performance. Yeah. Absolutely. That was, that Arsenal did not have it easy that day. No, they, they no. It was no. nice that, yeah, no. No, they didn't. They didn't. And, and um, I've interviewed Maggie already, and I, I've already spoken to her, and I said, um, the, the league table t doesn't, isn't accurate. Yeah. You know, I look at it and I'm thinking, Lewis, you know, it's just that performance was a WSL performance on the day. That's from, you know, I, that's what I thought. And I just looked at it and I thought, just need a, just a little bit of luck the other end and that game would have gone another way. Yeah. Yeah. Arsenal, yeah. Did, not I mean, end up, Arsenal did not enjoy playing at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did make it difficult for them, but I mean, they're, they're such a good team, so... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, if we had, to, yeah, if we did, uh, if we were a little bit more attacking, I think maybe we could have had a, a few chances. But then, obviously, the more higher up the pitch you go, the more exposed you are to to them yeah. counter attacking, and they've got a lot of quality going forward. So yeah, they, they, well, they do, but so do you guys. You know, there's talent there in that team. It's yeah. definitely talent, and you know, honestly, um, but one thing my daughter she doesn't like football at all. She hates it. She's not sporty. Uh, she's at uni. Uh, she's learning Dutch, I think. Uh, and I, I've asked her how she's using it. Uh, she said, I changed the settings on my iPhone so everything's in Dutch. <laughs> I thought, okay. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. passing that on to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, the, it's as, a, as a tool, I was thinking, is that what she, she says? That's what she does. It's, everything's in, in Dutch. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, right. So, uh, young people today, they've got all the knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I uh, were able to speak to you again and interview you again later on in the year, would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, really appreciate it. And I'll, uh, is it okay to save your number? Or do, do, shall I delete it? Or you tell me. Yeah, no, that's fine. You can fine. just yeah. send me a message. Uh, and oh, I must make a note. Hold on. Spoken. Was it spoken? Spoken. So, like my last name, spoken underscore word. Ah, spoken underscore word. Yeah. And and who's who's um, done the music for you? Um, which oh, you for your your rap track? Have you got? Oh, um, I work with um, a guy called Max Mezawave. He's a producer. Okay. Um, he lives in Lewis as well. Um, so he's produced the music, and I wrote the song, and then we've kind of collaborated on how it's going to sound. And yeah. well, I'll look out for it definitely. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. I see all oh, my time. See all my time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad it was more of you than me. But that'll be great. And <laughs> well, once I've edited it, I will yeah. um, upload it onto um, YouTube and post it out. Are you on Twitter? Yeah. Oh, are, are you? Can I, I? Am I following you on Twitter? I'm not sure if I am. Um, not sure. Um, um, my Twitter is l underscore king eleven. Let me just get to uh, things. So it's at L underscore, you say, King. King. Yeah, 11. 11. Oh, there you are. Oh, I am following you. I am, I, and you're following me back. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, I will um, edit that and upload it and then tag you in and all the best. For okay. US. And you, I mean, generally, I ask the question, are you okay with the whole lockdown? You know, you've got family with you or your friends? Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. yeah, very, very, very strange times. And your yeah, mom, he's... your mom's in, in Canada, Vancouver. Yeah, she is. She works over there now, or she just yeah. yeah. Well, she's not a police woman anymore then. No, not over there. No, oh. she stopped being in the police when she moved over there. So. Yeah. Okay. I've got friends in Toronto, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I've got friends and family. They're family that I only met last year through my mom's okay. side. So, yeah. yeah. You know, Caribbean life, you know how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that person's your cousin, that person's your cousin, that person, and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, then. Well, thank you very much. And I will edit, upload, tag you in, and speak to you soon. And all the best. Yeah. yeah? You be safe. No okay. Yeah, Thanks you a too. lot. All right. Bye. Bye.